Hello everyone and welcome back to the David Rolls Experience podcast, a podcast where I talk about things I want to talk about, speak to people I want to speak to. Um, actually on that point, I've decided I'm going to do a lot more solo podcasts. So I did one the other day and um, it's completely different than what I usually do. Like this podcast up until this point has mainly been like interviewing people within like sales and psychology and you know like um like burnout coaches and sales coaches and that kind of stuff very sort of like business oriented very sort of personal development self-improvement oriented but what I've decided to do just because it's a lot easier to do as well and I've got so much I want to talk about I don't want to like get stuck into a niche basically so I'm gonna start doing like mainly solo podcasts now I'm definitely gonna still do some guests but those guests, I, I don't know what sort of subject they're going to be on. It's going to be whatever I find interesting, really. Um, I have got a, uh, a very well-known sales trainer coming on um, in the next few months. Um, but I also will probably try and get some more like, you know, TikTok comedians on and just, just loads of loads of uh, people from, from different backgrounds. But I think mainly, at least in like the near future, it's going to be like solo podcasts just because... Yeah, I just I've got a lot of a lot of interests, and um, I'd love to use this platform to discuss them. So yeah, moving on from that. Anyway, this podcast episode is actually going to be about um, how to move from recruitment into SaaS sales, and the reason is so. For those who don't follow me on LinkedIn, and maybe you know me from TikTok or whatever, I moved into SaaS sales um, in when did I start Jan uh, February. So I started looking at January. And uh, started in February, so I'm about coming up to three months into it now. And I've had a lot of messages from people in the recruitment world uh, because that's what mainly what my network um, was and is on LinkedIn because I was doing uh, you know retained search training and business development training in the recruitment world. And then I was a recruiter for started in 2015, so what seven just over seven years I was in tech recruitment in in agency recruitment. But I've had a lot of people message me saying, oh, they're looking to get out of recruitment, but they want to be able to earn good money still. They want to utilize their sales skills. Is SaaS worth it? And also, how do I get into SaaS? How do I make that transition from from an agency recruiter? So I wanted to do an episode about this just to give some tips, just because it's so much easier for me to do this. And then I can record it and send it to anyone who asks me these questions. And hopefully it will help people. Um, There's a few benefits, first of all, to like, why you might even want to move into SaaS from recruitment. And this is like from personal experience, but also just stuff that's quite obvious to sort of see, to be honest with you. So first of all, one of the main reasons I think you might want to move into into SaaS sales is the higher basic salaries. So recruitment definitely offers very good, you know, earning potential. Um, You can earn six figures after a few years for sure. You know, I don't know many people that do that. But, you know, I, I do know people that do that. Um, you can earn very good money in recruitment. You still can, even even though the market's a bit a bit tough at the moment. It has been for the last couple of years. But the basic salaries tend to be quite low. Whereas in SaaS sales, the basic salaries are a lot higher. And because of that, obviously, you're able to, like, even if you earn, like, the same amount of money. So say you earn 80K in recruitment, you earn 80K in SaaS. But you might earn 80K in SaaS with a 50k base, 45-50k base, whereas in recruitment you might have a 28k base. And obviously your stress levels will drop because of that. So that alone for some people, and you know, like getting a mortgage and that kind of stuff, that alone could make it worth it for some people. So if you look into the basic salaries, like yeah, once you once you get into sort of that AE range, you can get you can get 40, 45, 50k um plus, you know, I've seen some AE roles even just recently with like I think it was like two to three years enterprise experience, which is like when you're basically selling to like bigger companies rather than small and medium companies. And they were paying like 65, 70K base, which is crazy, you know? So you've got these people in like their late 20s who've gone straight into SaaS sales at uni, four or five years experience, and their basic salary is like 60, 70K. So that could be one reason. Um, The same higher earning potential, like recruitment, like I said, if you get into a good market, et cetera, like, it, you can earn very, very good money, but in SaaS, the ceiling definitely tends to be a lot higher, especially like in the current market, in the current economy. Uh, recruitment earnings have gone down 
like quite a lot over the last few years since COVID, just because of, like the way the market's been affected. Um, whereas in SaaS, like I feel like it stayed quite consistent. Just from speaking to people, like I know a lot of people in the recruitment world, and the ceiling though in SaaS does tend to be a lot bigger. I find just because you've got that higher basic salary, and you know if you're working for a company where the product's really good and there's a massive demand for your products or service, you know the you, again you can earn over six figures after a few years. Um, but even if you're earning very good money in recruitment, you can earn that in SaaS, but have a much higher base you know you could double your base in some situations which therefore you know reduces your stress levels there's also a lot of like different products in recruitment in in SaaS that you can sell whereas in recruitment you're just selling the same thing like moving agencies you might get at least a different culture you know they might offer slightly better benefits or work from home or whatever reason you're, you're looking to move but you're still doing the same job right there isn't really unless you might move to like an embedded company which is almost a different job in a way especially if you're a 360 recruiter there isn't really that much variety within recruitment you're sort of doing the same thing yes you can change market and work technologies but again it's the same sort of thing and i say this as someone who's moved um, markets quite a lot whereas in SaaS, once you're in it like you can you can pretty much do whatever you want you, you can sell something that you're really passionate about like you could sell um you know some sort of like ai social media tool but then you could go and sell a platform that helps helps um reduce company's carbon footprint and help the environment or you could you know you could go um work on something in pet tech that you know helps animals that sort of stuff there's a lot more variety like and there's, there's basically like infinite possibilities in terms of what you can actually sell and the type of companies that you can be involved with and obviously you're actually making a difference because without a sales team you know as much as people like to to shit on sales without a sales team the company fails they're not making sales not making revenue the project dies and they're not able to help the people they want so you're actually able to make a difference in that sense because that could be another reason as well um there tends to be like much better training and a much better attitude towards training and investing in your pe- in people in the SaaS world like you if you just go read some like job descriptions for example for like bdr and AE roles they talk about like sales methodology and that kind of stuff and th- i never saw that in recruitment I, it was such a basic level in recruitment whereas in SaaS they really get into it. Like they're really interested in like constantly evolving. Self-improvement seems to be quite big in the industry. They massively invest in their people. Um, you'll get benefits you might not get elsewhere. Like, you know, um, even stuff like therapy and sales psychology training and that kind of stuff. Um, it's just, they just take it a lot seri- a lot more seriously. And it just seems like the, the industry as a whole um, has a much better attitude towards investing money into their people. Whereas in recruitment, generally it's, go out like do things as cheap as possible to make profit because it's a different you know, it's a different beast like they're sending a service recruiters are sending a service whereas um you know the the SaaS companies yes you've got the sales team but you've also got like the software engineers and the head of product and the head of marketing and all this kind of stuff so it's, it's, a, it's a very different type of company in terms of like the setup whereas recruitment is like hire as many recruiters as you can you know get them selling and then you might have like a small back office team you might have a marketing team, but in recruitment, it can be quite hard to sort of differentiate yourself because everyone's sort of doing the same thing. Um, and you're, 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 you're obviously your marketing tool a lot of the time is the candidates you're working with at that time, at that given moment. So the whole setup is, is very different. Um, and yeah, it just, it just generally from what I've seen and what I've experienced already, the, the investment of people is so much better. You also get different opportunities like going to events and that kind of stuff. And then the events are very different. Uh, even when you go to events as well, by the way, because you're actually selling a product, like a tangible product, and you can talk about what it actually does and the problems it solves. Whereas in recruitment, like I said, you're mainly sort of focusing on the candidates you've got at the moment because you know, most recruiters are, are doing the same thing, like in terms of they'll just fill your job, basically, right? So that's that's a, a breath of fresh air as well. And also the obvious one as well, which a lot of people talk about, is the fact that your product can't ghost you. Like the product's there, it's built. You 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 also like if you're in a good company, they're constantly trying to improve the product. So it's constantly evolving. It's exciting, writing new features, you know, that kind of stuff. So it is very different. And, um, but I find like a lot of the differences are, v- are very positive compared to like working in recruitment. So there, there's a few reasons why you might want to explore it and, and make the change from recruitment. Um, I'm going to assume you're a 360 recruit here, by the way, like you're already heavily evolved in the, basically for those who don't know, um, 
you've got like different types of recruiters. So in agency recruitment, you'll have like um, delivery consultants who basically just source CVs and fill jobs. And then you've got the you know business development managers who might just focus on business development, but they might not fill the job. And then you've got like 360 recruiters, which is probably what a lot of people have come across in that the recruiter is involved in the entire life cycle. So hence 360, right? Like a circle. Because they're doing the business development, they're doing the prospecting, they're bringing the the company on, then they're managing that account, and then finding candidates, then managing the candidates, then doing aftercare, etc. It wasn't a very good circle, was it? Yes, my thing's mirrored, so. Um, but yeah, that, I'm going to assume you're a 360 recruiter and you've already got business development experience. If you don't have that and you're on more the delivery side, yes, you have transferable skills because you're selling to candidates and stuff, but it's going to be a bit more tricky with, for, for you to get into it. It's definitely not impossible. Um, it's, it's, it's more that you might have to lower your salary expectations because you aren't doing the cold calling. You know, you're not doing the outreach, which is what you're going to have to do in SaaS sales. And you don't necessarily have that um, that experience. You're more like, you know, mainly just calling people off job boards or reaching out to people on LinkedIn, which again, you know, you've got good transferable communication skills. But if you're not like doing hard cold calling and, you know, LinkedIn messaging, email messaging, but mainly sort of the cold calling prospecting, then you are going to be starting a lot lower bar than obviously a 360 recruiter who's who's got business development experience. So... On that point, what I would say is, even if you're like a top billing 360 recruiter on like 80, 90, 100K, and you're billing like 200K a year, you're probably going to have to start from the bottom. You might find some companies who are willing to give you like an an account executive role, which basically means you're closing the deals. And then the BDRs, the business development reps, or the sales development reps, or whatever you call them, um, they'll they'll book you meetings, and then the AE closes, right? Does the demo closes, manages the account from then on but you're probably going to have to start from the bottom. And the reason reason is, the harsh reality is, and I went through this as someone who had, you know, sales experience before recruitment and sell, seven years of recruitment experience as a 360 recruiter. Um, and then I spent like a year, over, over a year doing business development coaching to CEOs and directors, like helping them. And I also helped some people in SaaS sales. I still had to start as a BDR, which is like the, the lowest tier of like the sales Um uh, the sales ladder in SaaS sales, and the reason is, and I didn't understand. I, I I didn't understand it initially, but I sort of do now, because the reality is that a lot of recruiters they might on paper bring on really good business and be very good at business development, but the reality is they're not actually selling a product. They don't know how to sell a product. Their service is very simple. A lot of their business is one on timing. And most of their business is one on emailing someone a C, uh, like an overview of a candidate they're working with. And that, that company just happens to be looking and we'll look at that company. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look to uh, interview that candidate, which means they've then won a client on. Which it's not really business development. Like, it, it is. You are developing business, but it's it's very simple. And you're more relying on like, like if you're a, a 360 recruiter, and let me just turn my phone off because it's making noises. But if you're a 360 recruiter and you've got like, for example, a delivery consultant giving you really good candidates all the time and all you're doing is just sending them out to people on like a mailing list. And yes, you might be bringing on, you know, Coca-Cola and Disney and whatever, but all you're doing is sending out, you're specking candidates out, right? You're not actually doing much selling. And that's the problem that a lot of SaaS companies have because even if you look like you've brought on, you know, hundreds of thousands of new business you're not doing it in a way that's really relevant to, to how you would actually sell in most sales jobs in like pure actual sales jobs um so it sort of goes against you so what i would say is if you really want to make the move like expect to be coming going in as a business development rep or an sdr um and apply for those roles because what also happens is and i had this happen to me a few times i apply for a bdr role and some people would come back and say hey like, we actually think you're overqualified, would you consider the AE role as well? And that's great, you know? But if you really want to get into SaaS sales and you want to get into it quick, I would apply for BDR roles, suck it up, prove you can actually do the job, you know, prove you can bring on business. Um, and the good thing is, is it, like, <laughs> to be honest with you, I know a lot of, like, very senior recruiters, like principal-level recruiters, even management-level recruiters, 
who are actually earning the same, if not less, than BDRs are on a base salary in SaaS sales. Obviously, you've got the commission, but the your base salary, you can actually get a jump on your base salary, even though you're coming into a junior role, right? And then obviously, if you're good, if you, if you are actually as good as you think you are, and as good as your experience shows, you're going to progress very quickly. Your base salary will accelerate very quickly. Um, you know, a, a lot of um, a lot of BDRs move up to AE. Some some move up within sort of six, nine, twelve months, right? Which means you're going to get a big jump, um, especially at different companies. So that's what I would say. Like, just just expect that you're going to have to start from the bottom. Apply for BDR roles. Apply for sales development rep roles, just to get your your foot in the door. And you need to be humble about this as well. This is my second point. So you need to be prepared to be very humble about your sales experience where a lot of recruiters fall down and fail interviews and struggle to get into the industry, because it is a hard industry to get into, by the way. Like, SaaS is very sought after. Like, people are desperate to get into SaaS, even with people with seven years' experience, because you're moving into an industry which, you know, isn't slowing down. You're going to be working with tech. It's interesting. There's so many different options in terms of the jobs you can choose um, and the industries you work in. And obviously the money can be fantastic as well. The culture can be really cool. It's where everyone wants to be, you know, in, within tech and tech sales. Um, so it is is in high demand. So you need to be humble about your sales experience because a lot of recruiters, they they, they go in with this attitude of, well, I've been doing recruitment for five years. You know, I've, I've made a lot of money in recruitment. Um, you know, I've been selling to, to C-level, et cetera. Um, I want X amount salary. I don't want to be, be a BDR. I want to be a senior AE. You know, I've been closing, whatever. And you're only going to get, like, shot down, to be honest with you. Like, you really need to be humble. And even if you are very good, like, you might be really good. You might have read all the sales books. You might have had loads of awesome sales training. You might be fantastic at cold calling and networking, whatever. Still, don't do that because the whole rec- – the, the, you've got to remember these SaaS companies would have interviewed so many people from recruitment that there's a stigma around it. And they just don't trust the experience, to be honest with you. Like, recruiters are very good at bullshitting. And they're very good at interviewing as well because obviously they're recruiters. They know how it all works. So they just don't trust them. And it, and even if you're talking about like bringing on new logos, new business, et cetera, they might not trust you um, and they might, or they might think, you know, you've just specced in candidates, et cetera. So I would just like try and humble yourself and, you know, let them, if they want to talk about your experience in a positive way, great. And you can do that in a way as well, but do it from the perspective of like, uh, you know, I, I, I've obviously got like some transferable skills, but at the same time, I appreciate SaaS is a very different animal. The way you sell and the level you sell at is very different and approach it from the perspective of I'm, I want to get into SaaS because there's so much to learn. And I, and I feel like I'm going to learn so much about how to sell better and sell different ways and sell in more depth, you know, sell into enterprise and different um, at different levels. Yes, I've got some good experience within recruitment and I think that will help me um, you know, pick things up very quickly. However, I'm very aware that the experience, a lot of it isn't necessarily relevant. Um, and there's a lot of gaps in my knowledge, which, you know, I'm very excited to to work with your company because um, so, so I can learn more about cold corner, so I can learn how you guys do it, how you sell a product instead of a service, you know. Um, recruitment is a very weird one because a lot of the stuff you sell on isn't actually tangible. Whereas, um, in SaaS, you're actually selling a product. Like you can you can demo people with it. it. It's literally software that you that's been built, right? It's very different compared to like, oh, I can fill you a job. You you sort of, a lot of time you're selling dreams, right? So it's a very different sell, and you just need to make them very aware that that you are happy to learn. You're very happy to learn because um, a lot of, a lot of people aren't, and that's one of their main concerns that you're going to come in, get bored, quit, um, or or think you're better than you are, and not take on feedback. Uh, research into the product and competitors is key when you're interviewing, right? So what I recommend you do, and this is what I did, is make a Google Doc or a Word Doc or whatever you use and just create like a template of like um, like research questions. So very similar to probably what you send your candidates, but make a, make a document with like specific stuff that you're going to get asked about the company, about what the, about the product, about what it does, about um you know the features and the the the, com- the competitors they have and that kind of stuff and you really need to understand the product and the competitors and the market they're in if you don't you're going to get found out because one of the main things that SaaS people are going to be looking for is are you able to pick up technical stuff because a lot of people struggle with that you need to be able to understand the technical stuff and then talk about it on a certain level 
um, to showcase that you are, you have that capacity to learn. And if you're not able to do that, and you only sort of talk about it on a, like a very basic high level stuff, oh, I've basically just read your features off your website. That's going to go against you. But the more you can talk about stuff and then like um, relate it back to like basic terms that are easy to understand. So like, you know, this product does this, the problems it will solve for your company are these, or is it really back to problems, right? Because people aren't interested in features. They're interested in, you know, what is that actually going to do for me? What problems is that actually going to solve for me? That's something that will, will really help you, but you need to do the prep. It's really, really important because if you don't, you get found out because they will grow you on it, especially if you come from recruitment. Researching into the values as well, like, and relating it back to the product. This is something I kept on coming across, and luckily I had done it, but um, a lot of companies in SaaS are far more, like, focused on their values because a lot of them are, you know, for example, if they're selling a, a product that helps the environment, right, helps people reduce their carbon footprint. You know, the type of people in that business are probably super passionate about, like, things that are on the very similar level, you know, they um they might or, or they uh, they're, they're very focused on the goal and the mission right and there is actually a goal and mission so in recruitment a lot of the time the goal and the mission is like let's go to a beefa you know let's bill x amount of money and go to a beefa whereas these people are like no let's save the world let's like help companies reduce their carbon footprint by x amount by 2025 or whatever you know but it's a very different type of environment and they have very different values and goals and they take their values seriously. Whereas in recruitment, from my experience, sometimes the C-level people actually forgot what their values were because it's all just wishy-washy stuff they're stuck on their website. Um, you know, that's fine. It works in recruitment. It's just a different beast. It's not to knock recruitment. But the, the reality is, like, you're going to be working for companies who are super passionate about their about their mission and they're not just necessarily doing it for money you know obviously that's a part of it but you know a lot of these people have like you know the software engineers the ctos whatever have poured their the blood sweat and tears into this product because they genuinely believe in this and they really want to make a difference in the world or within whatever they're doing they might be might build pet tech they might be super passionate about animals and saving animals lives and that product helps do that etc so you really need to like understand their values and why they're doing what they're doing in their mission make sure you make a note of that and stick that on your your Google Doc. Um, in terms of actually getting interviews, again, this is very tricky because it's it's a massively in demand in demand industry, and even people within SaaS struggle to get in, interviews at other SaaS companies because it's so in demand. Um, you basically need to treat the job search like you're prospecting, right? So you're trying to win business. So you need to use an omni-channel approach. So when you reach out to people, reach out to them on LinkedIn, reach out to them via email, reach out to them via cold call, but prioritize cold calling. So many people, like the majority of people, even when I was like interviewing and I've seen people um, post about this even recently, like BDR managers, they'll put a post out and then no one calls. Everyone's scared of cold calling. Everyone's like, especially like people who have been in sales like the last three or four years, a lot of them have been getting by with email and you know, since COVID, they just, they, you, you got a lot of wins via email, but that's massively died off over the last sort of like six, nine months. Email just doesn't work as much anymore. Um, people are looking for BDRs and AEs who are not afraid of picking up the phone and are good at it as well. So you really need to like, one of the best ways you can get interviews is cold call and cold message your um like the bdr managers the head of talent send them voice notes video prospect them but where you can pick up the phone because if you pick up the if you cold call them and they're actively hiring they will love it and you know sometimes you might get an interview there and then on the phone uh, you're basically just selling yourself in right you're just explaining why you're being why you're potentially a good candidate but if you can actually like cold call people and like the way i would do it is you know, find the, find the right people, find the BDR manager, find the head of sales, connect with them on LinkedIn, send them a note, um, drop them an email with your uh, CV and a little summary of why you think it'd be worth a chat for 15 minutes. Again, just treating it like a, like a prospecting um, exercise that you're trying to win business off them, just trying to get them on a call, trying to book a meeting, right? So we're going to be doing, with you, as a BDR, you're going to try and book meetings. So that's what you want to try and show them you can do, book meetings. Um, but get them on the phone, um, you know, uh, 
you can access numbers in, in various different ways. And I need to tell you how to do that. You probably do it already all day, every day. Um, or just, you know, if you've got a mate in SaaS sales or whatever, get them to use their Cognizant account or whatever they use, get the number, right? Um, a lot of these people, it's not hard to reach them uh, because they want, a lot of them are hiring and they want you to call them. They're desperate. Like I, I spoke to a um, BDR manager and um, she said she had like, she yeah, she had like, I think it was like 50 or 100 applications or something. And she ended up progressing like 20 to uh, next stage. But um, the first stage of the interview process was to actually reach out to her. And I think it was like 18 out of 20 emailed her or LinkedIn messaged her. And only two actually cold called her. One of them was me. And we got like guaranteed, um, like even if our cold calls weren't very good, we got like guaranteed next stage. Because no one's doing it. Like really, everyone's scared of doing it. And they'll, they'll do everything but cold call basically. So pick up the phone, treat it like you're actually trying to win business off them. They'll love it. Um, especially if you're, you're, you're good at cold calling as well. And what I would also recommend as well, like this is another thing that that really helped me. What I did was I actually um, recorded myself doing cold calls and stuck them on YouTube. And you can you can do. I, I was posting just content anyway, but um, if you if you don't want like obviously people to find out, like just do a couple of cold calls, record them, blank out the person, whatever, so that no one knows um, that it's them, so you don't run into trouble. But what you can do is like set them to private so no one can see them. Like you, the only people that are going to see them is the people you send them to stick them on your CV, send them to them on LinkedIn, email them, say here, you know, here's, here's some examples of me doing a couple cold calls. So you can see my style. It will massively help because again, nobody's doing that and it will massively help you differentiate your, your application. Um, and just lastly as well. So like when you're actually interviewing, what I would say again, just goes back to being humble, but, be cautious on progressing, like saying how quickly you want to progress from BDR to AE, because you saying you want to progress quickly isn't going to make you progress quickly, right? You know, I get you sort of want to come across as ambitious, but again, a lot of people, what they do in SaaS is they'll push you on this because they're very wary that you're going to come into a BDR role, especially if you've got like, you know, four, five, six years of experience in recruitment, you're going to get itchy feet. Don't say like, oh, I want to be BDR like in three months, six months, right? just explain that you it will happen when it happens right and obviously you want it obviously you want to move into a closing role again you know you might not you might want to be bdr but um you might want to it, you know a lot of people want to move into the ae role because it pays more and you're not doing the the cold call in um you're just sort of closing a lot of the time um but for whatever reason like you need to just be patient with it right because it will happen when it happens when you're ready they will promote you and their, their concern will be if you're like oh, i want to be there i want to move up to eight when six months nine months whatever they're going to be thinking oh he's just going to be looking for a job or she's just going to be looking for a job you know they're going to they're going to leave us after six months so what's the point so just be be cautious of that the, the, i would sort of flip it to be honest i'd ask like what's the average is but you know typically you're looking at if you're decent and you put in the work you're looking at around 18 months um, some people do do it quicker, like nine months, 12 months. I, I know people have done that and I've seen people that, that have done that. Um, but you know, depending on how, how good you are and how quickly you pick things up and the opportunities within the business, typically you're looking at around 18 months, maybe two years if you're a bit slower behind the curve. Um, but 18 months I think is a good realistic goal. But again, you saying that you want to do it in 12 months and that that scares them off, isn't going to help you. Like, I would just say sort of like, well, what is the, what is the average run rate? And then they'll tell you, and then you can confirm. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I was, I was actually thinking like 18 months. So I'm glad you said that. Um, I do think, you know, realistically after two years, I would want to make that move. But at the same time, you know, I assume that, you know, if I haven't made that move, it's probably because I still got a lot to learn. So again, going back to being humble. So yeah, that's, um, there's a few tips for like helping people um, move into SaaS sales from recruitment. I hope it's helpful. I hope it helps you get a role in SaaS because, you know, I've made this move. I, I was looking at making this move for four and a half, five years, um, did a lot of research into it, had high hopes and high expectations. And, you know, so far it's been brilliant. It's everything I wanted it to be. And um, honestly, I just wish I'd made the, the jump sooner. But, you know, not to say I didn't love recruitment. I love my time in recruitment. I got a lot, a lot out of it. But SaaS sales for me is like, it's just, it seems to be like a far more progressive 
industry at the moment. And um, if you're looking for an alternative and you're getting a bit tired of recruitment and you want to change and you're getting tired of accounts wasting your time, it's definitely worth looking into as, as, as a, an alternative career path. 